So now that everyone knows what is a bit of business, it's time to talk about brand and the role of brand in the bit of business. My name is Inej, I'm a product designer here at IDN, but my career has started as a visual designer, so this is a subject that really matters to me. I work for different types of clients, from Airbnb to Adidas, um, but also different methodologies that we have used to try to bring brand to life. And this is an opportunity to talk about the way that we believe that we should bring brands and the core of the bit of business. But before talking about this, I want to talk a little bit about uh, what has changed in the world and in our behaviors that make this need of bringing brands to a bit of business. Everyone knows that it's faster to launch new business, but often brand it's not a priority and it's comprehensive like founders they th they concentrated and they focus on the product itself and they opt not to invest in brands because of money or maybe they think it's not the right time to do it or maybe it will block the the process of launching the business but at some point they will need to think about brands and they will need to invest so when is the right time to do it the problem is we have, nowadays in the market, infinite choices. So we can launch the most amazing product or service and in three months or six months, someone else can exactly launch the same service and product. And what is going to make the difference between these two? Brand helps and brands makes this connection with customers. It's what makes people to become loyal to a brand and is that loyalty that will block the other competitors. But there's also another point that I'd like to talk about. We are becoming more and more conscious about what we buy. We know the impact in the world, and in, in, not just in, in the world, but the, the way that we consume, the impact on the planet and our health, etc., etc. So we want to know everything about brands. It's not just enough anymore, just what they show to us, but what's inside the company. Like I remember two years ago, I think, I read this article about the founder of New Balance Shoes uh, donated half a million to Trump campaign. I had New Balance at home and I refused to use them and I couldn't. And I was thinking like, I love the shoes but they don't represent me anymore because if someone else knows about this, they might think that I'm also supporting Trump. Maybe it was a fake news, I don't know, but that made me change my behavior. And, and this is to talk about how important is brand because it can have a really negative impact, but also can have a really good and positive impact about it. I've switched to Bulb, the energy company, because they are 100% using rene renewable um, energy. And I love the way they, they use their um, identity. It's easy to understand, it's transparent, it's simple. So that makes me a loyal client. I love the brand. And that's what you want to listen your customers to say, I love the brand. And that's what makes the the difference in the market is like, I wasn't going to talk about this to everyone. I'm going to tell it to my friends. And that's what you want. It's to create this relationship. So that's why I think it's the right time to talk about brands in the context of a bit of business. Because if we bring the brand to the core of the bit of business, this, at the same time that we are defining a proposi the proposition or the target audience or the, 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 serv the experience of the service, we can also start to build our brand. What is our story? And if you do that, we can start to test with real customers. So we can start this relationship with customers with a risk because when we launch it to the market, we know it already that has a strong voice and a strong identity and with less effort. But I'm going to talk more about this in detail. But before that, uh, what is brand? right? Brand, branding, design systems, logos, trademarks. There's a lot of things right now, but we know that it's more than a logo. If we think about John Lewis, 
um, or Monzo. Um, we, th we think about the logos, yes? Or we maybe think about this bright orange card that Monzo has. But we also associate it with these brands, words, right? John Lewis, we can say that it's reliable, it's authentic, <laughs> it's supportive. Um, Monzo, we can say that it's disruptive. Um, and is that part that it's really important to create? Is that emotional relationship? And how do we create that story, right? Because you could ask me like, yeah, I need a logo. No, first let's talk about what's the vision. What's the purpose? What is your target audience? And we are defining this already on a bit of business, right? So that's the right time to start to say like, okay, we know where we are building, how it works, why we are here, we know our target audience. So the next step is like, how can we translate this to the values of the brand that we are working? Let's say it's modern, it's authentic, uh, it's fresh. And then after that, it's really easy to translate to the visual assets, assets or the tone of voice or the experience principles. Me, for example, today, I've dressed differently for this talk. I'm talking in a different way and I'm behaving in a different way. If I go out on a Saturday night, I will not dress like this. <laughs> Probably I will not talk like this. But my personality, my core, my, 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 my values are the same. I'm stubborn, I'm curious, <laughs> and I'm passionate about what I'm talking about. And that's the part that I'd like to talk is we know that be the business, they change all the time. And I'm not saying the brand is not going to change. It's going to change and it needs to change. You need to learn, you need to shape it. But if you build it from the beginning, the foundations, it's much more easy and it's much more consistent and everyone knows what they are working towards too. But brand also creates tension. Brand or not brand? <laughs> Is brand a priority? Do I need a brand? Do I need a sub-brand? Do I need a brand close to the parent brand? Do I need, who I need to include to this conversation? There's a lot of questions and it's hard to talk about it, but it's important to talk about it because it's always part of business. Um, it's hard to talk about brand, but there's ways and triggers that help you to understand if you need a new brand to your new business. And I have some examples. Um, let's say that your parent brand doesn't allow you to grow and explore a new space. And I, 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 I got this example of British Gas. They have launched Wife where they sell smart devices to your home. So the way that they found like, okay, let's create a separate brand and they have created the, the, the really nice uh, brand I've made by Ophelins, I think, not sure. Um, and this is allow them to have a new exploration and a new identity, different target audience, new, different sector and etc. Second example that James has talked already today. Uh, but I thought it was a really good example because when two brands, they get together to create this new venture or this new business, of course they need a new identity, right? This drive now was, uh, was, was uh, uh, started with BMW and Sixth. So who is, they are not going to use BMW brand or they are not going to use Sixth brand. So they have created this new brand. If the parent brand doesn't resonate well with certain audience, so again, James spoke already about Smarty. Smarty uh, gives you discounts if you don't use the data, all the data. And three thought, this is great because I can, we can uh, try to attract another type of segment of our customers. And we have, if the parent brand isn't ready to take a big risk, this is an example, but there's lots of examples in the market. Sky wanted to face 
um, Netflix, so they have launched it. Now TV, uh, it's a streaming service and they, they try to uh, launch something new. Yes, there's benefits and there's challenges when we talk about being closer to parent brands. Um, the benefits, um, it's because if you are launching with a parent brand, the power of the power brand might help with engagement. What is great. Um, can, can also positively impact the parent brand image. So let's say that tomorrow Shell wants to change their image and they launch a new uh, service to recycle something. It's also good for the, the, through the parent brand. But also can have an, a, a negative impact, right? And as Chris mentioned before, you, are not, you don't want to launch something that is risky because you just thought about the, the happy path. But it's also the challenges as the sign off and the approval, the approval can be slower, right? There's more stakeholders involved. So it, this just to tell that, yes, there's tension. And I think what is the most important thing, and there's no, there's no an answer for this, and all the, the, the problems are different when you are launching a new business, but we need to talk about brand because brand exists. And I think we need to create expectations and making sure that we are involving the right people from the beginning and educated about why it's important and putting in front of people like, look, this is the options, these are the risks, which one do you want to go? But there's also benefits and uh, opportunities of, this, uh, uh, of bringing brand to the bit of business. The same as the bit of business, you can test your brand earlier. You can test it with real customers. Why are you waiting to launch the brand? You can start it from the beginning with less effort and you start to de-risk. Also, it's much more easy to change. So with the insights that you learn from your real customers, you can always shape the brand and trying to find, find the right identity. And bringing the brand to the core of the bit business, when you are defining your proposition and your business model and your audience and your product and service, because you are also uh, bringing uh, the brand at this point, the communication is much more easy. Yes, it's an option to work with an external brand agency and it's fine, but we know that it's hard, the communication and we lose the, is, the, the essence and the core story of what we are building inside the bit of business. Another good thing about it, bringing a uh, brand to the core of the bit of business, is the shared knowledge. I, uh, on my last project, when we've, we've done the three hours workshop to define uh, the personality of the brand, everyone from the team, from the different work streams were invited. There was a service designer, there was client, the client was present from different sectors. There was a, a product designer, me. <laughs> but so what I, what I mean with this is like, you can use your team to help you to shape the brand and not just a separate uh, team of designers defining what is the brand. And with that, you can achieve a brand market fit that resonates with your target audience when you launch it from the beginning and you start to create this relationship and getting attached to the, to the customers emotionally from the beginning. And how could, how could we bring brands to life? You saw this module before. James has shared this module before. The only difference here right now is that we are putting a layer on brand. So on the setup phase, we can create the right conditions to talk about the brand, explaining what are the risks, explaining what are the benefits, and, the, and, and, and deciding together as a team how we should go next. The discovery phase, we can find the right foundations for your brand. So this is the part that you define the personality of your brand. I'm not talking, I'm just talking about what's the core story of this brand that you are creating. And when you get to the market, you have already a foundation built, so it's really easy just to create your assets and your prototype or whatever you need to build the, your product or service. So it's just apply your brand and build just enough to start learning. 
And then the good thing is then when you learn and you grow, it's much more easy to iterate and grow your brand. But if you want to talk more about brands, just come to me and ask me more questions. Thank you so much.